Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm also joined with my cute little puppy dog called Coco and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I always do art tutorials on this channel but I'm going to be talking about the process of becoming a full-time artist and kind of how I did it in the space of two years and all the different sort of revenue streams I have. So stay tuned. So the first thing I think I should talk about is kind of how I got started, a little bit of history, and then I'll go into kind of like how I make money and my different revenue streams as being a full-time artist. So I never ever thought I would be an artist, I let a known full-time one, just because I feel like when you grow up everyone tells you like the struggling artist and like uh, it's not a career, it's a hobby. So I never ever like thought of it as anything more. I always enjoyed it throughout high school. I always did it. Um, and I, you know, was really good at it. But after high school, I never really thought about going to uni or anything like that. Uh, just because it just didn't seem like a way that you could make a living or, you know, have it as your career. It's always going to be a hobby. I was always good at it in high school. I actually got an art scholarship when I was in um, grade four and then like always got A's and won lots of awards throughout schooling. After school I left and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do so my mum suggested that I should become a makeup artist. So I went to college and did that and I was a makeup artist for around 10 years and I really loved it at the start. I did it so much and I guess like being a makeup artist is kind of like being an artist artist uh, but I worked you know I worked in retail um, and I also freelance and I did a whole bunch of just anything under the sun to do with makeup. I was an editorial artist for 10 years so that was kind of like working with celebrities, doing photo shoots, runway, I did fashion weeks around the world, um, I lived in London for a little bit working as an artist, I shot with some amazing photographers, I've shot with all like the big magazines in Australia and also some in the UK. Um, but I just found myself not loving it anymore. I found it really stressful. The industry was changing. Pays were going down. It was getting harder and harder. And then every person wanted to be makeup artists. And I just found like the schools were just pumping out makeup artists and everyone was undercutting each other. Uh, so I didn't have any intention of at the time when I did start doing resin art for making it as a job. I was still in quite the mindset that I was a makeup artist. I'd never ever change my career because that was my career. So I just did a resin painting because I wanted one for my house and I was looking them up and I realized that like I could do this like you know why should I buy like an original one when I could make one plus I didn't have like a lot of money so buying an original piece was out. So I just read a bunch there wasn't much out there when I started doing resin art. So I just read like a ton of stuff about resin, uh, you know, from all the manufacturers and just created an artwork. I was really happy with how it turned out and I just had it up in my house. Then a few friends saw it and they really liked it and so they wanted me to kind of like show them how I did it. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. And it was just because I thought the easiest way of trying to like tell someone how to do it would just be to film it tell them what I'm doing and then put it up onto YouTube. Um, not necessarily to start a channel, but I just thought it was the easiest way to tell someone how to do it instead of trying to like, I don't know, message them with instructions and stuff like that. And I didn't do it, like I just thought none of it afterwards. I sent the link around to my friends so they could see how to do it. And then um, I think like two weeks later, I checked it again and it had gotten like 22,000 views and I was like, what like this was not intentional at all and then I had my friends that watched the video were kind of like oh could you make some more like kind of this style or that style so I started to do some more videos uh, once again like no intention of making money turning it as a career or even launching a YouTube channel it was just kind of to help them out and I really enjoyed it it was a fun hobby and then some of them were like, oh, I'm still struggling. Like I've watched your tutorials and they're helpful, but I just can't get these things right. So I started to do like mini little workshops um, just to help them out. 
and I found that really fun because I used to teach makeup. Um, I got I, my teaching qualifications and I would do that as well at a few different makeup colleges. So I kind of just took how, what I knew about teaching but started instead of teaching makeup, started teaching resin. Then when I was on set at this um, place in Albion, which isn't there anymore, uh, we I was doing makeup on set and they were talking, the owners were talking to me and letting me know like, oh, on the weekends um, when they don't hire it out for photo shoots or for weddings, they have like art workshops. And that's when I was like, oh, I teach, like I do resin. Like, and she was like, oh, that's becoming really popular. Would you want to teach an art workshop? And I thought, oh yeah, it'd be like good to like, you know, have a little bit of extra money, a little bit of side hustle because the makeup industry was kind of really changing then like Instagram had taken over and no one was going through agencies anymore so therefore like even if you're an agency signed makeup artist like I was you weren't getting the work even though you would put all the years and effort and training in and then also to all the magazines were going like let's face it prints kind of gone and that was like my main bread and butter and everyone's budgets were getting cut so I thought oh okay like let's start doing like these mini workshops just so I can earn a little bit more money and I just started to do them. I only was doing it at that one place and I think I was doing like one a month. It wasn't like a big thing and it kind of like another workshop space contacted me being like, hey, I see you doing resin. Would you like to do some resin at here? And I was like, oh yeah, like why not? Like I really enjoy it. It doesn't feel like work. Um, and then kind of all the demo pieces and everything that I was making, I would just put up on Etsy really cheap just because I was just like, oh, they're just demo pieces and I can't keep all of these like around my house. So if I can sell them for like, you know, 50 or a hundred bucks, I'd be happy. Um, and then I just kept making art as well. I kept doing YouTube tutorials cause I was really enjoying it. It wasn't necessarily to become an artist or an influencer or anything like that. I just really enjoyed doing the YouTube tutorials. I think like the creative process behind it. And then also people were really loving it. And I think I found like resin at the right time because not many people were posting about it on YouTube. It hadn't become a thing yet. So I think that was also why my YouTube tutorials did so well. And because they were doing so well, it did give me like more of an incentive to keep putting more up because even though at that time I was not making any money off YouTube because, you know, with YouTube you've got to do a lot of views to make some money off it. I was just enjoying it. I was really having fun. And then I would just sell off those artworks that I made for really cheap on Etsy. And yeah, so that's basically how I got started into kind of the world of resin. It wasn't initially like I'm going to be an artist. It was just, it was really slow steps. I just really enjoyed it. So I started doing more tutorials and I really enjoyed that teaching at one place. So then I started teaching at a second place and I was slowly doing some commission pieces, but it wasn't a job at all. It was just a side, a little hustle, a bit of a hobby. Okay, so I was teaching at two places and then decided that I was earning, you know, pretty decent money teaching resin art workshops, better than what I was earning in a day going and doing a full day of bridal makeup, which by the way, I hated doing bridal makeup. But as a makeup artist, you generally do it because they're steady, it's reliable, um, and you know like they're not going to cancel their booking because you know no one cancels their wedding. But unlike with editorial photo shoots, which I really loved, which I got to be really creative on, I'll put some photos up of like my old work so you can kind of see um, the kind of makeup artist I was. It was very creative. Uh, I loved the editorial shoots but they rarely paid or if they did pay it wasn't well so you would have to do a lot of commercial work or a lot of bridal work which I just really didn't love and the more and more I did it and the more and more I focused on the money the less I loved doing makeup and it became a real chore and I just remember in the industry I was constantly pushing constantly like you know you've got to always hustle and get your name out there uh, just because there's you know, a gazillion makeup artists out there. And if they're slightly cheaper, it's like, why would they not book them and book you? So you always have to constantly prove yourself. And after like 10 years of being in the business and I won so many different awards. And I remember I like came to like the high point of my career when I, like, you know, I was in the finalists for Australian Makeup Artists of the Year, like five years in a row. And then like that came the year that I won two awards at that. And that was like 
so amazing but yeah I still wasn't getting enough work to kind of support myself because you'd get like a big job and then you'd get nothing for a bit and like it kind of it was so fluctuating and it was stressful and when it was at its peak I used to make you know really good wages and could live off that and really enjoyed it but with the changing of the industry and so much like undercutting it just wasn't enjoyable it was so stressful and I was taking jobs I just didn't want to do that were not amazing pay but at least they paid and so I started to focus more and more on art because I was getting just one it helped me just mentally because I feel like when I was doing makeup and stuff I would just think of it as such a chore and art was kind of like that escape where all I was thinking about was what I was doing and so I just kept focusing more on that. I started to reach out to workshop spaces um, as that kind of trends became more popular. So workshop spaces, I think when I first started there was like two maybe three and now there's a ton of them um i think because it's become like a fun activity to do with your friends instead of going out for lunch or going shopping or something like that people are now doing workshops not necessarily to even take it up as a hobby or start like a career off it but they just want to you know make a artwork have fun with their friends um and it's a great way to do it at a workshop because everything's supplied you don't have to go and get anything you've got someone there to help you through so if you get stuck at any point like there is someone there so the workshop started to take off. I started to contact a few different spaces um, and then became like their resident artist. So I was doing probably like a workshop a weekend at that point, plus also doing YouTube, but never actually doing it like properly. Like I think I uploaded in the first year of doing YouTube, like 11 videos. So not even like one a month, but they were still doing really well, even though I wasn't consistent with it. Um, I wish at that point I was consistent with it, but for me, makeup was still a career. And then I just kind of got to that point with makeup where I had worked so hard, hustled so hard, but yeah, I still was getting like, you know, I was losing work and I was kind of getting to that point where it was getting really hard to pay the bills and art was actually getting to that point where it was making more money and I was enjoying it more. So I decided to take a step back from makeup and take a break and start to focus more on to art. So I was making sure I was doing at least one workshop to two workshops a weekend, which covered everything. And then I was gonna to start to be consistent. So in 2019, the start of 2019, was when I decided I was gonna do one YouTube video a week and I think I pretty much stuck to that. I think I got like 40 videos up out of 52. So I was pretty happy because I decided I wanted to be consistent. And I also like the fact that like YouTube actually pays you on the same day. And I was getting like a little bit of money from YouTube. So I was like, oh, well, this is like a nice little incentive. At least it's covering the cost of all my products and stuff. Then I started to reach out to brands and started to get sponsorships because as my YouTube grew, um, more brands wanted to sponsor me. And because I was teaching workshops, well, generally, if you get taught with those products, you want to go off and buy those products. So in 2019 was kind of like, it had been one year since I had started my first workshop and then I was doing it at five different places. And now I think I'm doing it at seven or eight different places now from the Gold Coast to like Sunshine Coast area. Come along to my workshops if you would love to do it like an in-person one, just by the way. Um, yeah, so for 2019, I did pretty much one video a week. Plus I was also doing um, all my workshops. And then I also started, I think in midway through that year, I started taking bridal bookings for preserving flowers in resin, which I had taught myself how to do that. So therefore, I worked out that I was actually making a better income and more solid income from doing like the bridal flowers um, because, you know, I'd probably get one of those a week. So I'd get, be getting like four of those a month plus like the little bit of money I was earning off YouTube plus the money I was earning off workshops. And I just decided that I didn't want to do makeup anymore and this was my new career. So that's kind of how I got started into that. And that was all within, from now to like back then, it was probably in the space of two years. That was a little history about kind of how I became an artist and how it became my full-time job. 
Now let's talk about revenue streams. There are multiple ways that you can make money being a full-time artist or even a part-time artist. It's really up to you and especially with like today's technology, there's so much you can do and it's really amazing and you get lots of options. I'm gonna talk about a few ways that I make money from my art and a few other ways that you can as well that I don't do but I do see other artists do. My first revenue stream is YouTube, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be talking to you about it. So YouTube pays uh, you, um, the YouTubers per view. You actually have to get quite a lot of views to even make halfway decent money. How they work it out is, so you know the video, uh, the ads that play before the video, YouTubers get a small, small percentage of that um what people have paid to put that ad up, we get a little percentage because they're paying to put it up before our channel. This does fluctuate, so it depends on who your demographic is. So I'm very lucky because my demographic is, uh, I guess, more valuable for YouTube because it's Australia, it's the US, it's Canada, it's Canada, um, Canada, it's the UK, which People from those countries are more likely to click on the ads and spend, so therefore YouTube puts a higher value onto that. So your CPM could fluctuate anywhere from like $20 down to like $1.60, depending on who's viewing your um, videos. So like, you know, Australia's got a really high CPM because Australian people are more likely to buy when they see the ad beforehand compared to another country. Um, it also is like what kind of ads are playing before your videos. So like um, ads for like financial cars, Amazon, you get paid a bit more because people advertise a lot of that. So people that sell like those online courses, like I think we all see those ads that pop up, they pay a lot for those ads. So therefore you get more money and you get paid like per thousand view. So let's say your CPM is $5, then YouTube takes half of that. So then you've made $2.50 for a thousand views. So if you get 10,000 views, you've made $25. So it's not a crazy amount. So for your YouTube channel to be profitable, you either have to put out a ton of videos just to get views, or you need to be getting tons of views on your videos. And you get paid once a month. And as long as it's above $100, you get paid. If it's less than $100 that you've made, it gets put into the next month. So that's one way that you can make money. Uh, a lot of the time when you're first starting out, it takes a really long time to make money. I don't think I made money in the first year just because I was getting views, but they weren't like, um, I wasn't putting out enough content for it to reach at like $100 threshold. So I think I got paid like really sporadically. It wasn't a wage. And you've also got to remember like YouTubers, like I particularly spend money to create videos because I've got to buy art supplies and like resin in particular is expensive. So if you get a video that only gets 10,000 views and you're only making $25, but you spent $50 on art supplies, it's not necessarily profitable. Um, sometimes like videos can slowly, slowly keep going because as long as it keeps getting views, no matter when you put it up, you keep getting paid for it. But if it takes a year to reach like a hundred thousand, you've just been getting like a small like ten dollars a month, ten dollars a month, ten dollars a month from that one video. So you can make money. There's tons of YouTubers that make a ton of money, but it's a slow process and it's one you've got to stick with. And I think YouTube does that on purpose. One for um, their creators to keep putting out content so they don't just go off what they were already making and just slowly get like that sort of um, passive income stream. So it makes us make more content because it, you know, we don't get paid that much. But the pros for having a YouTube channel is one like now mine has started to get a little bit sizable. I can now approach um, brands and ask them for free product. Um, hopefully one day I can then ask them for like paid plus product um, to promote their stuff. But right now I kind of just get some free resin. I only do approach brands that I actually like their stuff. I wouldn't just um, promote anything. So um, I'm now just in that space where every so often a resin brand like Barnes or Ellie Cam or Artie Sue, they'll send me out some stuff just because I like their stuff and I need it for a video anyway, so I mention them. But so far, like, I haven't had any, like, sponsorships. 
The second way that I do make money is through my in-person workshops and these are by far like my best revenue stream. Um, I tend to now that I've become quite popular and I do quite a lot of workshops, I can do anywhere from like one to three workshops a weekend. So that money does add up because I have certain cuts with different workshop places. Um, and then they take the ticket prices, they do all the organization and I shop and teach and then we um, split the money depending on which workshop it is, does depend on how it does get split. So when I do get free product from brands, it does help one with the YouTube, but it also does help with the workshops because I'm then not having to spend a lot of money buying resin for the workshops. Now that we are in isolation, all of my workshops have been like put on hold indefinitely. So that has affected like how much money I am bringing in because that was by far, I think that was probably 80% of my income was with these in-person workshops. So I still have other income coming in, but that was the biggest one. Um, you, like I said before, like there's so many ways that artists can make money. You don't have to do workshops. This is just one of like the forms of revenue streams that I make. And I did read somewhere that like most millionaires have multiple revenue streams. So you need to have more than one if you're going to be an artist because when something like this happens, if I was just doing workshops, I would be not making any money at all. The third way I do it is with commission pieces. So like I said before, I do a lot of bridal work uh, where I get fresh bouquets um, from brides and then I um, dry them, preserve them in resin, whether it's paperweights, bangles, bowls, artworks. And I do that as well. So that generally keeps me busy during the week. So during the week I do like my YouTube um, and I do that. And then normally on the weekends I would go and teach. I also do do like commission artwork. So just doing like different commission works is a great way that I think most artists make a lot of their revenue from is through commission pieces. So even if you're a digital artist, you would be designing um, graphics or whatever it is, that's like commission work. So I think that's probably like one of the biggest ways a lot of artists make. Now the fourth way that I make money um, is another online platform and that is with my online course. I now offer an in-depth online resin art course for people who can't come to my workshops because now I do have quite a lot of followers worldwide. Like I think over 40% of you guys are from the US. Let me know if you are from the US if you're watching this and you are from the US, like leave it down below where you're from. Um, but yeah, like 40% of you guys are from the US and I have like really big ratio of people that just can't get to my in-person workshop. So I decided I was going to do an online course that was like being in a workshop with me, but only better because you get to see four demos instead of just one. Um, I will leave a link to that below if you want to do it. If you use the code word YouTube, you get a 45% off the online workshop and that's only for my YouTube followers. Um, so that's a special one for you guys and that's an online workshop that you just log on and you can access at any time and watch and rewatch. There's seven different modules and four different um, pouring demos in that. So that is the fourth way that I can make money and um, that has now become my primary source of income just because I'm not doing the in-person workshops. So now I'm doing more online stuff. So having online courses is another great way for artists to make money because if you want to reach a bigger market instead of just local, when I do my workshops in person, it's always local. And I have looked at doing traveling workshops, but when you actually work out like hotel costs, transport, food, all of that, you have to do quite a lot of workshops in the one spot and like sell them out and charge quite a premium for it. So I feel like this is a way that I can do a workshop for people that can't get to my local ones and you know you get to watch it you can jump back on and watch it anytime and I'm also not having to travel everywhere with all my stuff because I get asked so much to go overseas and do workshops in the US but like the flights everything like that it just works out that I would make I would actually lose money doing those so by doing an online course it's a way that people can come to my workshop I can make money you guys can come and do it and everyone benefits from it. I am gonna add right now just a little preview of what you get in my online course. Resin art for me is a movement, it's emotion, it's intricate patterns and it's self-expression. 
My name is Sherry Vegas, and today I'm going to share with you my passion and my knowledge for my chosen medium, resin. I'm going to show you what you need to know before you get started in the world of resin art. In this class, we'll go over basics all the way up to intermediate techniques that every resin artist should know. What I love most about resin is that you don't need a fine arts background or any experience to get started, just the desire to create. I'm Sherry Vegas and this is my online resin course. Let's talk about other ways you can make money being an artist online. One is selling merchandise. So if you notice down below, I have a little merch bar um, and I do designs and put them up on Teespring. That's a great way for artists to earn money. I go through Teespring because they do all the printing and shipping and I don't have to do any of that. Um, so I find it really easy no matter where I am in the world. If someone doesn't order, it gets fulfilled. And uh, I've got like this shirt on which just says art is my therapy. And then I've got my like flower piece sign and I'm slowly doing more designs. You don't have to be a YouTuber to set up a Teespring account and this is not sponsored in any way. You can also do it through I don't know a local manufacturer where you keep the stock and post it out and you can promote that through Facebook Instagram all of that sort of stuff so you can do your own merchandise and you can do it so many different ways but that is another way that you can make money um, through art There are a ton of online ways. So as I said before, like my online course, YouTube, if you also become a big enough like influencer or have a big enough following, you can then start getting like paid sponsorships to use their products. I'm not there yet, but hopefully one day I will be because um, that does help out because a lot of influencers do make the majority of their money off getting just sponsorships. I do feel like you have to be careful with that because you want to promote brands that you generally believe in and not just whoever's offering you a paid job. Personally, I only promote brands that I genuinely like. Um, so yeah, you can get paid sponsorships. Another way that you can do it is through affiliate programs. Um, I do Amazon because I recommend these products and I buy them so everyone always asks me in all my videos like where do you get that so I decided to set up an Amazon affiliate account where the products that I buy and I love and I use my videos and I recommend to you I then um, have it like down below where you can go and purchase everything. You know it's good quality because it's what I'm using um, and you don't have to then search around for a brand because you go, oh, well, that's what Sherry's using. I'll get that. And then I get like a very small percentage of that sale. And um, that's another great way that artists can make money online because we do use products and people want to know like even if you do um, drawings you still use different pencils and you've got your favorite products so why not make money off recommending them because you've gone through that trial and error of sourcing and seeing if stuff works and because I know I've tried that many resins and now I only recommend ones I like but I went through all of that trial and error of seeing which resin works for what I want and only want to use high quality resins. So an affiliate program is another great way that artists can make money online. Self-publishing. This is amazing, especially with technology today. I follow a few, like there's Webtoon um, and you can kind of, you know, do your own cartoons, self-publish them through uh, like an app like that and people can then view it and then people can buy to get like more previews of your like to come up because I think they like normally release like one a week but if you want to jump because you're really enjoying the story um, and the like graphic novel so self-publishing is a great way that you can make money online because you can do podcasts as well um, if you're a writer you can do stories and put them up and people can like buy chapters at a time so we do live in an amazing world where there are so many ways that an artist can make money and definitely self-publishing there's so many different aspects and forms to that like you YouTube, I guess would count as a way of self-publishing so self-publishing and thinking of all the different ways like podcasts um, ebooks uh, doing your own graphic comic book strips uh, you know 
online courses, all of that is all, I think, covered under self-publishing. And the last way that I'm going to talk about uh, how you can make money being an artist is just selling your products, whether it's going to market stores. I do tons of chopping boards and I do tons of demo pieces because if I'm doing three workshops a week and work that out, I do a demo in each one. All of those pieces I do slowly like just put away and eventually I'll go through and take photos of all of that um, and I'll either put it up in my Etsy store and sell them off as demo pieces so people know that that's why they're cheaper or I will do a market stand so this is like I, I did touch on before like commission pieces but this is like you know just creating up for the fun of it and then selling it off you know either through Etsy, Etsy is a great way that artists can make money because you can sell so much stuff through there. I sell my prints, the ones that are like here and here. I sell those from my Etsy store and I sell all my demo pieces but you can also do the market. You can also go around to lots of like um, depending on the style of your art, target actual stores. So if I was to go and sell like resin artworks I'd probably go to like um, home design stores, like little boutique ones that are more um, higher end and see if they'd be interested in taking a few pieces like whether they buy it through um, wholesale or if they buy it like on consignment where then once it sells you get paid but there are so many ways that like you can just go and physically sell your artwork. I hope you guys all liked this little chat we had together. I am trying to get more on camera. I never used to go on camera much if you go back and watch my really old videos just because I was really nervous um, and I was worried about being judged because there are a lot of uh, you know keyboard warriors out there and I've just come to realize that everyone that follows me um, isn't that kind of person and isn't a judgmental kind of person so I kind of became more comfortable about being on camera and I hope you everyone enjoyed kind of like my little um, story about how I became an artist and then talking about all the different revenue streams and if you are kind of like feeling like this is something for you take the plunge because if it's something you love I truly believe you can make money from it and really make a living from it if you liked this video please give it a big thumbs up if you're new to my channel please do subscribe I'm also going to be doing another YouTube live because the first one I did was really successful so I'll be showing you how to do like a crystal style chopping board in the next one and I'll also be asking all of your questions I will be putting up the date um, in my stories really soon it will be on a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock Brisbane time and I think that's like 5 p.m. LA time on the Friday I will be doing it very very soon in April so make sure you subscribe so you can find out when the next one is and you can ask me questions all to do with like YouTube art um, what I'm doing making you know just it'll be an interesting tutorial anyway so definitely uh, make sure you subscribe and let me know in the comments below if you are an artist or if you just love doing it as a hobby and where you're from especially if you are from America let me know down below thank you guys so much for watching